What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? Welcome. Welcome. This is Clocked Out with Nash Harrington. Not going to waste any time. Let's get started. Did you guys see this? I don't know if you saw this. A local marijuana dealer in Brooklyn decided to donate half of his earnings last week to help victims of Hurricane Sandy and their families. It's a true story. Yeah. He reportedly delivered 72 Hot Pockets, 16 bags of Chex Mix, and 33 bucks in IOUs. He did. He did. It's true. Uh, another piece of charity news. People trying to help out. It's nice. I like it. A bar in Soho has created a new drink called a Sandy and is donating all the proceeds to relief projects. That's nice. That's nice. It's nothing special, really, just a watered-down Manhattan. But uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, it's not too soon. We've got a great show tonight. From True Blood, we have Jamie Gray Hyder. And from NBC's The Voice, Season 2 contestant Pip will be hanging out with us and performing tonight. Excited for that. Uh, guys, recently a new movie came out. I'm having trouble remembering what it was. It was popular. It was, oh yeah, James Bond came out. The movie's called Skyfall, named after the U.S. economy, of course. But Daniel Craig is, Craig is in his third Bond film and has definitely solidified himself as a true James Bond. But who really is the best James Bond? <laughs> Just for the record, I wasn't with Green for a month. Wedding present. The future. This is Bond. <laughs> First a boy and then a girl.
it's time we said goodbye to an uninvited guest. <laughs> at last. All right. All right. Before we move any further, I don't know if some of you guys have noticed, uh, if you watch Crave Online very often, I don't normally have a mustache. And I do have a mustache right now uh, because I dream of being a 70s porn star. Uh, but more seriously, I'm doing Movember. Uh, I was an idiot and didn't set up a charity ahead of time, so you guys can't donate. But if you can grow some mustaches, you can get some money, donate it to uh, ball cancer. Let's move on. <clears throat> Our first guest today uh, is most recognized from True Blood. She was on last season. She's a beautiful model. And on top of that, she has mastered the art of the three-part name. You've got to have one of those if you want to get famous. NPH forever. <laughs> Please bring her out, Jamie Gray Heider. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How's it going? How's Good. it going? Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Take a seat, take a seat. Now, as excited as I am to talk about True Blood, before we get there, mm -hmm. I heard that you recently went to San Francisco for a bluegrass festival. Yeah, they have How in the world did you get into bluegrass? Um, I like most music, but they were having a huge bluegrass festival while I was there up in Golden Gate Park, so they just had multiple stages going on. Everybody's outside hanging out. It's free. BYOB. It was a good, it was a, My you style. know. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> had a lot of fun. Awesome. Okay, and now I have to ask, the holidays are coming up. Okay, you are not from Los Angeles. I'm not. Okay, where are you from? DC. DC. Northern okay, Virginia. from the DC area. You're going back for the holidays yep. for the annual Hyder Turkey tradition yep. extravaganza. <laughs> the I don't know what the name Christmas. of it is, but please explain <laughs> to me. I've heard brief things about it. Um, every year, our family does something we call Hyder Family Christmas Turkey Fry, and okay. we basically have probably over 150 people come in and out of our house on Christmas Day. These within... are just your brothers and sisters. Yep, that's it. Okay. Just you know, big family. Um, we have tons of friends. <laughs> um, we have tons of people come in and out, and every family brings their turkey for their Christmas meal, raw turkey, and we drop it in our deep fryer, and we fry up turkeys for everybody in the neighborhood. And every time a turkey comes out of the fryer, everybody outside has to do a shot of wild turkey. So oh, nice. I only drink wild turkey one day a year. I drink a lot of it on that day. <laughs> so Michelle Obama is just like picketing your Christmas party <laughs> just for anti-health, just horrible. Well, that's why you do it one day a year. One day a year, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, now let's get to True Blood. I want to talk to you about this. You were a new character in the mm -hmm. most recent season of True Blood. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who haven't seen the show or don't know your character very well, mm -hmm. what did your character add to, to the storyline of the show? Well, I'm one of the new werewolves. My character, Danielle, comes in at a time when um, our old pack leader at the end of season four has just been killed, and now they have to decide who the new pack leader is going to be. So she, along with all the other werewolves on the show, are trying to pick a side as to which of two different pack leaders they're going to side with. Yeah. So my character picks, um, she sides with JD, who's uh, vying for pack leader, and she makes a lot of controversial decisions. My character, yeah. you know, Danielle takes V is an in an effort to get strong so that there is a big battle going down, you know, she can make sure that she's on the winning side. Yeah. So she was just, you know, a part of all the werewolves just trying to decide who was going to be the new leader. Yeah, and what was it like coming into a, such an established cast was an intimidating. Oh my to, God, to be on, it was scary as shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went in for um, the table read for the first episode and I walk in the room and it's just the entire cast sitting around a table. Yeah. And I remember just feeling like the new kid at school. But as yeah. soon as I walked in, everybody, you know, whether they're a big star or they're a writer or whatever they are on the show, they just came up, oh, you're the new werewolf, Jamie. It's so nice to meet you. And yeah. showed me around when I was on set. Everybody was so helpful telling me where things were, how things work. And everyone's just happy to be on the show. So it's kind of like once you've been included, you know, yeah. you're part of a, a special team at that point. So everybody's just really welcoming and really cool. Awesome. The most important question truly is, could you guys beat the shit out of those emo kids on Twilight? Absolutely. Thank God. <laughs> they annoy the hell out of me. I can't stand them. And True Blood is one of the only uh, of the vampire series, I think, that a, a girl can watch it with her boyfriend and they're both... Exactly. Equally there was a entertained. Lot of female nudity. There's a lot of nudity in the show and action and <laughs> violence, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> all right. So, aside from acting, step away from acting for a second. You work at Record Planet Recording Studios. Yeah. Okay. Now, you work with a bunch of different artists. What's it like dipping into both sides, the music industry and acting? 
Well, I've, I grew up, I'm a classically trained vocalist, so I grew up in yeah. music. And when I was moving out to LA, I knew I would need a you know, survival job while I was getting right. myself established. That's what I'm so. Doing right now. <laughs> Doing pretty well, I'm not too far off. Um, so I found a job at a recording studio, which turned out to be Record Plant, which is one of the top studios in the entire world. So it's amazing how much our paths cross as far as my acting stuff and my music stuff. And I'm there working with amazing artists, you know, and yeah. everybody, like I said, from Elton John, Lady Gaga. Wow. I've seen, met Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones, wow. and we have Chris Brown and Black Eyed Peas, and like, well, you know, we have only huge clients. So. It's been a really neat thing for me to not have to work in a restaurant. You're so much cooler. Than that. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> well, it's been great talking to you, but there is something very important that we have to get to today. Oh, yeah. Because you today, Jamie Gray Hyder, are competing in the most important game that anybody could possibly compete in. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Cocked Out. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm ready. You ready? Okay. Ready. Here are the rules for Cocked Out. You've got your three guns to choose from. Mm -hmm. You have got your target over there. All the different holes have the different numbers for how many points you get for shooting it through the... You get the idea. <laughs> Let me introduce to the guns. This is Little Boy Blue. Cock it back and forth. All kinds of fun. This right here is Green Thunder. All right? Shoot discs. A little different than the darts. You might want to give it a try. And finally, we have this one that I haven't named yet. So it's the yellow gun. <laughs> now, you have 30 seconds to score as many points as humanly possible. Okay. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. All right. Choose your first gun. Which one do you want to go through first? I'm going to go with the big guy. All right. It's already cocked. It should be ready to go. So your first shot is all loaded up for you. All I'm right. going to get behind you because I don't <laughs> trust you at all. Uh, you can step up a little bit mad, closer. I'm just going to throw the Step up the line right there, right there, right there. All right. Are you ready? Is everybody ready for this? Yeah. We're going to give you a countdown, a three, right. a three count, all right? Are we ready for this? Everybody, everybody? <laughs> three, two, one, go! Oh, here we go, here we go. Got to keep cocking, keep cocking. Ah, oh, so close, so close. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> You're almost there. Ah, come on. We're supposed to be good at this. You were talking smack backstage. <laughs> come on. Oh, we got a ten. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Oh, keep going, keep going. Oh, we have 15 now. Ah, oh, 20! Oh my gosh. Oh, Three, <laughs> two, one more. Good. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Big round of applause. You got 20 yeah. points. All right, all right. One last time. You get to oh, shoot this baby, right. okay? This is Grasshopper. All right, here, give me the big gun. You can get that one anymore. Ready? I'm going to cock it for you. You get one shot. Right. Wherever you want to go. You want to tack on five points? <clears throat> going go for, for the you. balls. You want to go for the balls? My kind of girl. Sorry, that, was <laughs> that was bad. Shouldn't have said that. All right, don't file any suits or anything. Oh, oh so, so close, close, so close. Oh. All right, everybody, big round of applause. She got 20 points. She got 20 points. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Of Congratulations. Thank you for me. We will be right back with pop star Pip, but before we do that, we've got a brand new PSA with Rand. Folks, we live in a dangerous and troubling time. We defeated those Nazis. Nice mustache, stupid. Only to have a new Soviet enemy spring up in their place. Look at this, Mario brother. But now, an even more dangerous foe has arrived. Godzilla! Surviving a Godzilla attack. A Godzilla attack can happen at any time. So remember, when you hear that roar, hit the floor. Good job, Timmy. While hiding behind that knee-high wall, the beast has no idea where you've gone and refrains from attacking. Look at this. Now this family's enjoying a day at the park until Godzilla attacks. Luckily, they know what to do. They cleverly hide underneath a blanket and newspaper, confusing the hell out of the monster. Remember, folks, if you can't see it, it can't see you. Now look, an attack can also strike at home. Bobby hears the roar and then hits the floor immediately. Oh my goodness, good job. Shucks, another empty house, says Godzilla. Scientists have recently discovered that Godzilla loves music. Oh, <laughs> my favorite song. Put some tunes on to distract them while you hide. This beast loves to boogie woogie boogie. Look at those moves. Oh, he's getting down. Remember to seal all doors and windows to increase your home's structural integrity. Then hide. Oh, let's go down here. 
Do you really think we're safe down here? I mean, come on, it's Godzilla. Yeah, of course we're safe, surely. With all our doors and windows sealed, the lead paint in our home will shield us from Godzilla's ray. It's what you call science, surely. God. Now look, they wait and- Oh my goodness! A knock at the door? Oh, I bet it's the neighbors. We don't have neighbors! Oh my gosh, look out, stupid! It's Godzilla! Oh, Lord! An attack can also come without warning. Like in the case of this class on their way to a museum. When you hear that roar, hit the floor. Look at this. Because of their fast action, these children are A-OK. -okay. The threat of a Godzilla attack is real, but it doesn't have to be scary. If we all remember to hit the floor when we hear that roar, we can make it through this together. Our next guest was a contestant on season two of NBC's The Voice. Let's just bring him on out. Ladies and gentlemen, Pip! Look at that. Bow tie. How you doing? How's it going? Take a seat, Great. man. Take Thank a seat. Great. Thank you. Now, this has been your first summer in Los Angeles. Yes. You were not summer. from L.A. What no. was it like being new to L.A.? What was that like? Um, it's been interesting. It's been kind of me finding my own place. I've been really busy making my first record after yeah. the show. So, um, But it's definitely been an interesting summer of just trying to find my place. It's a strange city, especially when you're from the South. Yeah. It's very, very different. So. A little bit different. Yeah. Not as many bow ties here. Exactly. No. But that's okay, yeah. though. You're, you're, you find your own flavor. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, so... You took a cross-country road trip recently. Yes. That was the last trip you took, and I'm guessing that was the move, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. it's when I brought kind of the rest of my stuff over here after the show. And you drove out by yourself? I had a friend, but I drove the entire way. He just kind of was there to make sure I didn't fall asleep. And just sleeping in the passenger <laughs> yeah, seat exactly, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. So you were uh, on The Voice. Mm -hmm. All four judges yes. selected you. They all turned around and were like, we want to coach this guy. And then you were tasked with choosing which one was actually going to be your coach. What right. was it like having that many choices? In that um, like way more stressful than having no choices, I think. Because like when you walk out there, I personally was kind of all like, I had a speech prepared for like when no one turned around. You just want to be like that, that guy who was just like, thanks for this opportunity, blah, blah, blah. So I had like this or speech. Or screams at all of right, them. Right, right, <laughs> right. I had this speech ready and then when they like each one turned around, I was like, oh shoot, like this is actually happening. And then yeah. you just, your mind is like, what if I picked the wrong one? What if I, you know what I mean? So it's, it was definitely nerve wracking, but I, I think I picked the right one, so. Yeah, you picked Adam Levine. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. And so, what happened with you on The Voice? Did that give you the confidence that you needed to decide, you know what, I'm going to do this permanently. I'm going to come to L.A. and I'm going to do my thing. Absolutely, yeah. I was in pre-pharmacy school before and so kind of flipped my life um, 360, but it's definitely... Hollywood's a little different definitely, than pharmaceuticals. Yeah, just a, just oh, a actually, it's not that different than pharmaceuticals, to be totally <laughs> I mean, honest. I guess. <laughs> There's pharmaceuticals involved in parts of Hollywood. Uh, now, in terms of building your confidence for L.A., something happened to you recently that might have shook that a little bit. Yes. Your car got stolen? My car got stolen. What happened? I know you're used to the uh, the nice, sunny, safe suburbs of Hotlanta, <laughs> that obviously nothing bad happens right, in Atlanta. Nothing Atlanta's ever. Atlanta's a very safe city, guys. Super safe. Uh, what, what happened, man? What, what's the um, I have no idea. You know, it just my... I parked it one night right outside my apartment, and then the next morning it was gone. What part of town do you live? Hollywood. Not, not oh Hollywood. Okay. Yeah, just I was saying we'll give away too much. We don't need any, like team. My bombers. address is no. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, like two days later, it just the police called me and they my found car was back. Car. But it was like trashed. Like so, it looked like like a bunch of people just had a party in my car. Like it was disgusting. It was no, gross. That's too bad. Gross. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great talking to you, yeah, and we sure. actually, we're going to get to listen to, to one of your new songs yes. that's going to be on your new EP, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear about that. But before we get to that, we have one more special thing for you guys. Uh, the team here at Crave Online, we had a great opportunity to go hang out backstage at the historic Will Turn Theater with the SoCal band Iration. It's definitely been a long, long journey getting to where we are now, but um, it's nice to see all of our sacrifices and all the hard work we put in uh, paying off for us, so it's, it's really cool. We all have different musical tastes. Joe likes metal and punk, and I'm more like a pop, 60s, Beatle-y type, type thing. He likes Roots Reggae, Kaysen's like a like hundred different things, hip-hop, guys, you know, comes from like R&B and Motown and stuff like that, so when we get in the studio, it's up to each individual musician to do what they are going to do with the song. That's what makes it a, a good process is everyone's allowed to kind of do their thing on the song and find their way through it. When it comes together, it just naturally kind of blends. 
we lived together for a long time and we've known each other since high school, so at this point, we know everyone's idiosyncrasies and little weird ticks and, and yeah. things that kind of like annoy people. There's definitely been some fist fights Let's like over the years. Feet. Hey Colin, what time did Jeremy say the reservation was for? 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Colin, what time do we play tonight? When we're getting started and traveling everywhere in a really small van. If you can do that and make it out alive, when once you get to the bus, it's it's totally fine. I think most of our LA fan base has kind of been with us for a while. We've done pretty much every dive bar in the city, up and down Sunset Strip, from On the Rocks, then graduate to the Roxy, to the Key Club, to the House of Blues, and then up to the Wiltern. So it's really cool to take time out and kind of get to meet everyone whenever uh, whenever we get the chance. We met a concert, you were the in Congress, I'm not good at playing with Queen. You said I was funny, I spent all my money, then your friend get thrown in the pool. Well, it's a, it's a marijuana pipe. <laughs> Brand new pipe. You know, when you do one-offs and when you first start playing, you're definitely nervous and after you play 40 or 50 shows on a tour, you know, it just becomes like you're more stoked to go out there and, and play and, and it's just muscle memory every night. When you get up there, you can pretty much just shut your brain off and go. I did not get enough sleep last night. I was so excited I couldn't sleep, man. Me too. I think tonight is going to be everyone just so happy to be home after such a long tour and we just want to make this last show the best it can be and the best show of the tour to end it on a good note. Ladies and gentlemen, Pip. Everyone who sees You can be cruel You can be mean But all I want is more When we chat late through the night Throw me a second Till the morning light There's something there That you can't deny Now all I'm asking for Is that tonight you won't say maybe That's how you've been acting lately I can't take this game you're playing You give me Back what I'm giving Cause all I want is you, you I'm all in Oh, and I'm begging Yeah, all I want is you, you Something breaks me down at the thought of you you kick my heart till it's back in blue Ups and the downs, the ins and the outs But somehow I want more Everyone wants a little peace But you and me, we got a history Thinking about the past makes me a future dream Cause all I'm fighting for Is that tonight you won't say maybe That's how you've been acting lately I can't take this game you're playing you give me back what I'm giving Cause all I want is you, you I'm all in, oh and I'm begging Yeah, all I want is you, you Stop these games you're playing Just listen to what I'm saying I'm only, I'm only gonna say this once I'm the one to give you all you need Nobody else could ever quite complete Got me dreaming, dreaming future dreams So listen while I say it, baby yeah. All I want is you I'm all in, I'm all in Oh, when I'm beginning, yeah All I want, all I want, all I want Everybody, big thanks for Pip rocking it out tonight. And of course, Jamie Gray Hyder for coming out tonight. Everybody, please have a wonderful holiday season. The first one up, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you in December. <laughs>